Dad, why are you here? I exclaimed involuntarily. Dad was in the yard, under the blazing sun, lying in an old, worn tent, just like the ones. I saw in my childhood. Aw, oh, don't worry about it. It's the usual thing, Dad's weak reply made me speechless. Since he had injured his leg, he has been living with my brother and his wife. My brother always said Dad was doing fine whenever I called, and his wife always chuckled, saying she was supporting him properly. I was told that the reason I couldn't get in touch with Dad himself was because he was not good with technology, and he had made new friends at the hospital, leading a fulfilling life. Seeing Dad lying there listlessly, I keenly felt that my brother and his wife's words were a lie. Dad slowly raised his hand to me and pointed in a certain direction, and there I was. I am single, and my parents' house is in the city, but I moved away from home to live alone in the countryside to fulfill my dream of working at a resort hotel. My parents living at home had a traffic accident two years ago, and only mom passed away. Dad injured his leg in that accident. Not only that, but he also got deeply depressed after losing mom. Dad and mom were always together and were known as a loving couple in the neighborhood. Dad was quite an indoor person, but he used to travel regularly for mom, who loved traveling. On the way back from one of these trips, my parents had an accident, and only dad survived. Why did I survive instead of her? He was filled with deep remorse every day. The injury made dad, who preferred staying indoors, spend even more time at home. Since I was working, there was only so much time I could spend for home care. Seeing dad so down made me feel terrible. But fortunately, I have a brother who is seven years older than me. My brother Peter and his wife Nova, living close to our parents' home, occasionally checked on us. Dad's gotten a lot weaker, hasn't he? When I said that they were a loving couple after all, it's understandable. We live nearby, so Margo, don't worry and focus on your work, Peter replied. Thank you, when I thanked him. Recently, I've been directly hit by the recession, and my income has decreased significantly. I need to start saving soon. How about you, Margo, he said with a sigh. I'm actually doing pretty well, thanks to tourists coming back from abroad. I have been really busy lately. Unlike my brother, the overtime paid compensated for it, so I haven't been struggling financially. In fact, I've had a raise, and I think I'm earning more than most of my peers. However, not having private time has been tough. It was the first time my brother had lamented about his financial situation. According to him, they've had to cut back on food expenses and are barely making it through each day. He hasn't bought clothes in over a year, and of course, they haven't been on any trips either. He said they wanted children, but the two of them were barely managing as is, so having children was out of the question. I was worried, they must be really struggling. Then Peter mentioned during a conversation at his house, Dad's leg has gotten much worse, and he needs some support. We're thinking about living together so we can take care of him, followed by Nova. We were talking about how it would save us money and we could take care of Dad at the same time. I appreciate it. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help, I thank them on the spot. Thank you, Margo. Good luck with your work, Nova also seemed happy. Thus, to save money and take care of Dad, my brother and his wife decided to live with Dad. The relationship between Dad and my brother wasn't that great to begin with. My brother used to come home in the morning and was often scolded by Dad back when he was a student. Gradually, they stopped talking much, and after graduating from college, Peter hardly ever came home. I had hardly seen Dad and Peter talking since he became an adult, so it was surprising that Peter was being positive about living with Dad. It was easy to imagine they were really struggling financially. The appeal of saving on rent and living expenses was totally understandable, especially for someone living alone like me. However, I honestly felt anxious about whether they would truly take proper care of him since I couldn't go back home often due to work. 
I regularly called Peter instead. Hey Peter, how's dad doing? He started to smile a bit more these days. Isn't caregiving tough? I'm sorry to leave it all to you. It's been three months now, and I think we've gotten quite used to us living together. Initially, I felt anxious, but it seemed that my brother and his wife were dedicated to support dad so I could focus on my work with peace of mind. Several years have passed, and after the summer vacation ended, I decided to visit my hometown for the first time in a while. I called Peter to avoid surprising them with my sudden return. Hey Peter, it's been a while. Oh, it has been. How are you? Think you'll be able to come home this year? I was relieved to hear his cheerful voice. Yeah, the busy period has finally calmed down, so I'm thinking of coming home for two or three days. That's good to hear. Be careful on your way back. Thanks. Please let Dad and Nova know too. I tried to call Dad as well but couldn't get through, so I informed Peter and then went home for the first time in years. It was the first time I hadn't been back home for so many years since Mom passed away. I was worried about Dad and tried to visit home as much as possible during my holidays. But I felt reassured because Peter and Nova were living with him, and I had been too busy to visit for several years. The family home in the city felt hotter than where I live. I finally arrived at the family home, sweating and wondering for how long the intense heat would continue. Then, I saw an old tent in the front yard that I didn't recognize was there. Wondering what it was, I approached the tent and felt someone's presence, so I hurried into the family home. I'm back, I said, feeling relieved. Welcome back, Margot. You look pale. What happened? Nova looked surprised to see my pale face. I think there's someone in the tent, I hastily reported to Nova, who welcomed me back. Then she gave an unexpected reply, Ah, that's Dad, my brother's wife answered calmly. What? Dad is in the tent on such a hot day. I rushed to check inside the tent. Inside, Dad was lying down as if he had collapsed. Nova, I'm calling an ambulance. Dad is fatigued, I said urgently. No need to call an ambulance, Nova shouted at me. It's Dad's wish to live in the garden, so there's nothing to worry about, she said. Something incomprehensible, Dad is fatigued on such a hot day and still claims to want to live in the garden. That extreme indoor person would say such a thing. I don't remember Dad ever being taken camping or to beaches, even when Mom was doing great and healthy. Dad used to say the best place to stay in summer is in a chilled room, and the heated room in winter. There's no way Dad would want to spend time outside on such a hot day. I felt that something was off, an unpleasant premonition came over me. I hurried over to the tent where Dad was and spoke to him, Dad, what happened? Are you okay? Margo, it's nothing, just the usual. I'm fine, Dad said in a weakened voice. Do you live in this fiery place every day? Won't you come inside? When I asked Dad that, he slowly pointed towards the main house. There was Dad's room. Actually, since living with Peter and the others, I've been forced to live in the closet, Dad revealed the shocking truth. In the closet. I thought they were dedicatedly taking care of you. Not once have they taken care of me dedicatedly. Their living together is only for their own savings. I've repeatedly told them I hate the closet because my leg hurts. Then they said if I complain, live outside. And that's why I was thrown out in the garden with an old tent during this still hot period, Dad continued with a story I wished I could shut my ears to. It was clear that my brother and dad could not get along. I blamed myself for trusting Peter. Nova was not the type to dedicatedly support someone either. I remembered how Peter used to complain about her going out drinking and coming home wasted early in the morning. This couple, who said they ate out 365 days a year and never cooked for themselves, clearly weren't cut out for taking care of dad. 
Yet, I was foolish enough to have expectations. This is not okay. I've got you now that I'm here, I thought. It was shocking to discover how terribly they had been treating Dad. Despite their claims of dedicated care over the phone, they had actually forced Dad to live in a closet and then thrown him out into the yard. Unforgivable anger welled up inside me. Ignoring me, as if pleading, I called an ambulance. I said there's no need to call an ambulance, my brother's wife desperately tried to stop me. But I continued to ignore her words. When the ambulance arrived, they took Dad, and I went along. Dad was on the verge of heatstroke, but fortunately, it was not life-threatening. However, he was hospitalized because he hadn't been given proper meals and was left in an unhygienic environment. Dad, rest easy and take your time to recover, I said. Then he replied, Margo, you're my lifesaver. I was prepared to join your mom every day, he looked relieved. What are you talking about? We need you to live much longer, I said. Realizing Dad had been living each day as if it were his last, I felt tears welling up, but I kept a smile on my face in front of him. I went back to the family home to collect some things for Dad's hospital stay. Peter, Nova, you need to explain yourself about Dad, I confronted my brother and his wife with my anger about how Dad had been treated. We were just acting cold, hoping Dad would leave on his own, Nova confessed nonchalantly. Yeah, surprisingly he was stubborn and wouldn't leave, Peter said as if it was nothing. They seemed to be aware that they had been cruel to Dad. They laughed while talking about their attempts to drive him out. Do you even hear what you're saying? It's good that he's alive, but if something had happened to Dad, you'd both be criminals. I exclaimed. You're over-exaggerating. We did feed him and checked if he was alive once a day, he spoke as if they were dealing with an animal. He's being hospitalized because he wasn't fed properly. What do you think, Dad? It's absurd to kick him out of his own house, I argued. My brother and his wife showed no sign of remorse and began making excuses. We didn't want to live here out of choice. We moved in because we were struggling financially, but caregiving turned out to be harder than expected, they said. Then Nova added, that's why we tried to put him in a facility, but Dad really hates the idea of leaving this house filled with memories of his wife. He even tried to kick us out. They appealed to me, victimizing themselves, struggling with the caregiving. They attempted to make Dad leave, but instead, they were the ones nearly driven out, and tried to make him want to leave on his own. Having free rent is a big deal for poor people, so we couldn't just let him kick us out, Peter said. I never thought my brother would stoop so low as to deliberately worsen Dad's care and quality of life just to monopolize the house, Peter confessed. Although Dad and my brother weren't that close, I believed as an adult in his mid-thirties he would manage well with Dad. It was frightening that they could come up with such a vile strategy. Moreover, my brother confessed that by locking Dad in the closet or throwing him out into the yard when I was visiting, they were trying to make Dad choose to live with me instead. Living in the countryside is better for his health anyway, so we were fully planning to send him to live with you my brother said. Wasn't he surprisingly stubborn? We thought he'd run away before you arrived, but he endured, Nova laughed, as if they were sharing tales of past hardships. Now that you are back, Dad will probably say he wants to live with you, Peter laughed, saying this. Then he said something outrageous, now that Dad's been sent to the hospital, this house is ours. So pack your things and leave. I was so appalled by his audacity that I was at a loss for words. To think he could say such a thing while living in someone else's house. I gathered Dad's belongings and went back to the hospital. Dad, I heard about what happened from my brother. It must have been tough, I spoke to Dad. Trying to drive them out of the house backfired on me. That house is a treasure filled with memories of Mom. I couldn't just hand it over to such people, Dad's love for Mom kept him going still, which felt reassuring. Don't worry about the house, we'll figure something out. 
The hospital stay might continue for a bit, but would you like to live with me after you're discharged? When I suggested this, Dad seemed pleased. After getting Dad's consent to live together, I went back to my place. Two months later, I received a barrage of calls from Peter. There are a bunch of unknown men in the house, what's going on? Although Peter was furiously demanding answers, I simply handed the phone to someone else without replying. The person who took over the phone was our maternal grandfather. Hey Peter, I've heard the story from Margot. You've done something terrible to my dear son-in-law, Grandpa spoke. Grandpa. Peter sounded shocked. Our family home was actually built by our grandfather as a wedding gift for mom when she was young. Dad was adopted into the family, and grandfather always doted on dad as if he were his own child. When I told grandfather about the situation, he was furious and sent over some of his strongest apprentices to drive out my brother and his wife. After the commotion, I immediately called grandfather, who is the land and house owner. Grandfather has always been imposing, and Peter has always been afraid of him. I sought his help this time, believing he would be able to do something. Peter, all your stuff has been arranged to be sent to Nova's parents' house, Grandfather said. Don't just go ahead with things on your own, Peter resisted, albeit fearfully. A person who treated their family like that has no right to talk back. Got any complaints? Grandfather spoke sternly. No, sir. I'm sorry, Peter conceded and didn't talk back. After that, Grandfather was always kind to me, a woman, but very strict with Peter. Growing up, if he cried, stop crying and man up. Grandfather would spank him, causing him to cry more and get scolded even further. What was acceptable in the past is now considered taboo. Watching Peter, I often felt relieved to have been born a girl. Although he had been rebellious towards Dad, he never dared to defy Grandfather. This time too, he tried to resist a bit, but Grandfather quickly took control, showing my brother couldn't match him. Peter and Nova's belongings were delivered to Nova's parents' house as Grandfather had arranged. Upon arriving at Nova's parents' house, apparently, it had been a long time since they returned there. Hey Dad, I think our stuff has arrived, so we came to pick it up, Nova said. Nova's dad came out from the back room. I've heard everything from Peter's sister. You guys are going to live with us from now on, then my brother responded. It's okay. We'll live at my family home, Nova's dad intervened. Don't even think about returning after doing such things to your father. I'll straighten out your rotten attitude. Nova's dad was furious. I had heard that Nova's dad was very strict. After explaining everything to her dad, they had no choice but to live altogether under strict discipline. Nova was taught to cook from scratch and had to prepare meals for the family every day. Peter got permission for a side job and helped Nova's dad with his work on weekends. After being discharged, Dad was told by Grandfather that the house needed repairs due to damage. Determined to fix the house filled with memories of Mom, Dad committed himself to rehabilitation and recovered impressively. You did great with the rehab. The doctors were even surprised by your quick recovery. When I said that, Dad replied, of course. It's the house filled with memories of your mom, so I need to put my all into fixing it, he spoke with a brightness in his voice like in the old days. It seems love for mom helped dad recover. With grandfather's instructions and the help of his apprentices, we gradually repaired the house. While repairing the house, dad seemed to regain the sparkle he had when mom was alive. You seem really lively. Working on the house brings back a lot of memories, and it feels like I'm talking to your mom, Dad said. I felt like she had gone far away, but maybe she's been nearby all along, watching over me. Hearing Dad talk like that almost brought tears to my eyes. Despite the horrible treatment from my brother and his wife, perhaps Mom really was protecting him. Eventually, the house repairs were completed. 
When the repairs were done, Dad decided to let go of the house. Dad, are you sure? I asked. I felt like Mom said it's okay not to cling to this house anymore. Plus, now that it's so beautifully done, I really want someone to live in it, he spoke in a calm voice. I see. I think she would be happy too. Thanks to the renovations, Dad and the team made, a buyer was quickly found. Thanks to all of this, Dad and Grandfather decided to move into nursing homes. I've started visiting more often. Dad, how are you? I asked. I'm having a great time every day. Made a lot of friends too. It's all thanks to you, Margot. Really, thank you, Dad was smiling. Dad seems to enjoy his days with the other residents, making my time spent with him even more precious. And I've been living more peacefully every day. As for Peter and Nova, we've gotten used to Dad's discipline, and it's quite comfortable this way, Nova said. Yeah, the strictness isn't all the time, and the house is big. It's great, Peter seemed to be enjoying their lifestyle too. Being freed from caregiving is actually lucky for us, Nova was happy. Thanks to this, we're living a good life despite the low income. I feel so grateful, my brother and his wife had adapted to living at Nova's parents' house and were happy to be freed from caregiving, showing no signs of remorse. Then, Nova's dad, furious at their lack of repentance, kicked them out. There's no sign of remorse from you, so you might as well leave, Nova's dad said quietly but angrily. Dad, wait. Pack your things and leave immediately, he expelled them without.